All right, heading into round three. Picks 84 and 98, two big ones for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The if they're there category. These are big. These are names that are falling down, and some new names have made their way onto the draft board. The if they're there, probably not going to be there at 84, but if they are, you cannot pass these guys up. Defensive tackle out of LSU, Mason Smith makes the list twice. Andrew Phillips does as well, cornerback out of Kentucky. Number three on this list, we finally get some linebackers. Junior Colson out of Michigan, followed by Jeremiah Trotter Jr. out of Clemson, and then to round it out, Dwayne Carter, defensive tackle out of Duke. Of those names, who's the most exciting? Who's the most realistic to make their way to the Pittsburgh Steelers at, let's say, 84? Yeah, Colson seems like the more realistic one, I would have to say. Um, You know, obviously, like, we've been over this just now, but Smith and Phillips are kind of like your ideal targets. Those are the guys that you need. But yeah, I'd say Colson or Trotter, I think one of those linebackers of this group seem like the most likely to fall down to the Steelers at 84. Yeah, I, uh, I like... Colson, I like Trotter. I have been against the Steelers adding an inside linebacker in this draft class just because I just don't think that they need one. Like, how many inside linebackers can you possibly have on your roster that are supposed to play roles? But if you don't know what's going on with Cole Holcomb, if you are looking at this as the last year of a Landon Roberts, okay, maybe you look at both of them. They've done enough homework to say, I feel comfortable with Junior Colson. Jeremiah Trotter, they haven't really done much of anything on, but they've been obviously at Clemson's Pro Day, and Mike Tomlin and Omar Khan were front and center for whatever he was able to do. Plus, I mean, you go back a couple months, Jeremiah Trotter is like considered a first-round pick. You go back a year ago, the Steelers are landing this guy in the first round of mock drafts, and he's got the NFL bloodline. That tends to help. The Steelers love NFL bloodlines. I could see him being there. I, I would say Junior Colson, just to mix it up, I agree with you, is a name to watch. Dwayne Carter also definitely excites me there if he's available at maybe 84. These are our realistic picks at 84 and 98, which we get it is a jump, but you got you to gotta squeeze everybody in here and see what you could come away with. A little bit of everything, but heavy offensive tackle in this one. Mason McCormick, offensive lineman out of South Dakota State, could play guard, could play center, could possibly play tackle. They got him lined up all over the place. The Steelers brought him in for a pre-draft visit. An interesting name to watch. Josh Newton, cornerback out of TCU. This is a slot guy. This is a, you know, if you're not going to go Max Melton, if you're not going to go Andrew Phillips, maybe you're thinking Josh Newton in the third round out of TCU. Hometown kid, Matt can call this offensive tackle out of Pitt, a guy that, I mean, we've talked about him more than once on this podcast, and if it wasn't for a toe injury, I believe, Mm -hmm. he would probably be higher than a third-round pick here at either 84 or 98. An interesting center out of Penn State, Hunter Norzad, who we had Nick on the show, on Nick Martin on the show on Friday, and he was a big fan of Hunter Norzad in the third round. And then Blake Fisher, offensive tackle for Notre Dame. If you're skipping offensive tackle, this might be the name's to go with who's your favorite on this list yeah i you know if fisher like i honestly think fisher is going to go a little bit higher than this uh, especially like before 98 uh but i think he would be my pick here if he's if he's there in the third round i think you got to go with him um i i like uh, the way my draft work works out like i just had to pick an offensive tackle with one of these third round picks needed one um so i'd say either fisher or goncalves are my options here but i i think i'm preferential to fisher I, I also think I'm preferential to Fisher. I think that this dude, he played on a good offensive line, and there are just like really good offensive linemen around him that may have bumped his draft. Oh, Notre Dame just produces good offensive linemen. More times than not, their offensive linemen turn out to be at least decent in the NFL. Blake Fisher is an exciting name. I like Goncalves. I think that you could look at the hometown kid. I think that his medicals would have had to come back really, really clear for the Steelers to, to consider him in the third round. And people are going to obviously bring up, well, the last pit project didn't work out. I agree, but I think offensive linemen are a bit different. And this guy, I mean, he was projected to go a lot higher before the injury. Yeah. I, I think the only problem is that Goncalves isn't necessarily known for being a tremendous athlete. So, like, yeah. you know, the fact that he didn't really test and when he did test at his pro day, it wasn't great. Like, knowing that he was kind of at 80% or whatever, he wasn't fully recovered, he still didn't really look like himself. I think that's definitely going to hurt him. And then, you know, it's the kind of thing where he would have really shown up on tape. Like his, his tape, if he had played a full season would have really helped him, but 
without that, it's really hard to, I think, attach yourself to Goncalves, especially because he'll need a little bit to to develop. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. I mean, maybe Fisher, but I don't think anybody you're getting in this round is instant starter in these yeah. realistic options. Yeah. I mean, if they're there, guys, I think every one of them walks in here with an opportunity. But these guys may have to sit them for a year. And then some fallback options. And these are some definitely interesting ones, ending with a name that I don't think many people are going to be excited about, but it could be a shot for the Steelers. Number one, wide receiver out of Florida State, Johnny Wilson. I mean, there are not many wide receivers that are six seven in the NFL, so you got to look at one whenever it comes about and say, maybe, maybe we consider him. Cornerback out of Missouri, Chris Abrams Drain, an interesting name that you brought up during the process. Christian Boyd, defensive tackle out of Northern Iowa, who the Steelers brought in for a pre-draft visit who definitely started to at least become a name within the Steelers Nation community because he was here for a top 30 visit. Dylan Johnson, running back out of Washington, was the first reported pre-draft visit for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't believe that ever actually happened, and that could be for a number of reasons, but it was really the first running back that the Steelers have shown interest in, and with Najee Harris entering a contract year, and we don't know what's going on with his fifth-year option, Definitely a name to watch. And then to round this list off, and we might piss a lot of people off, but here it is. Quarterback out of South Carolina, Spencer Rattler, who if you ball out at the Senior Bowl, you got a shot to end up in Pittsburgh. He balled out at the Senior Bowl. He's got a shot to end up in Pittsburgh. You look at that list, who stands out to you? Who's the, if you had, I mean, this is a very all over the board list here. If you had to pick one that you thought maybe could end up in Pittsburgh, who would it be? I'd say Johnny Wilson is the most likely, um, which is you know kind of obvious. He's at the top of this list, but uh, I just think you know it's entirely conceivable that the Steelers go you know corner or tackle or something that it falls that they go offensive line in the second round, and then I think if that's the case, you have to pick a wide receiver in the third round. And Wilson, you know, he's a little raw, but I think for a good reason. Like you take that six seven frame, like. Six, seven people aren't supposed to be playing wide receiver in the NFL. So no. I think you see an athlete like that, you see a frame like that, and you say, let's try to work with him. Let's see what we can get for uh, the 98th overall pick in the NFL draft. We can we can live with that risk. So I think Johnny Wilson is the most interesting guy to me. Rattler, Rattler's funny here, man. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, like, I don't think it's likely, but I don't know. They need a, like, <laughs> I get, like, it's just interesting, you know. Like the, the quarterback said the other day that they're not done. At, they're not done a quarterback. That's what I'm saying. Like it's, it's just interesting because I don't think they are completely sold on either Fields or or Wilson just yet. You know, I so agree. it's. I don't. I I don't think it's likely that they're using a a pick on a quarterback at this point in the draft in the third round. But if Spencer Rattler falls past this, then I think it starts to get interesting. And then I think if you're the Steelers, you start to you start to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, you definitely have the conversations and see where those conversations take you. Spencer Rattler, maybe in the fourth round, becomes an interesting name. I'm going to hold out on my thought and my belief that the Steelers are not selecting a quarterback until maybe the sixth round, but Aditi definitely sparked my interest. I don't know how much I'm going to take it to heart, but definitely got me at least thinking a little bit. And if you're going to go before the sixth round and talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and just a realistic name, Spencer Rattler is the most realistic name. I think the name to watch for me on this list is Dylan Johnson. I think the Steelers might look to add another running back. I don't know how they envisioned Cordero Patterson. I think to have four guys in there and at least just see what happens is very interesting. And in the fourth round, I mean, you could be looking at this and saying, look, at that's a guy we got for the next four years. That's real cheap that, you know, we don't got to worry about Najee next season. We can move on. Maybe, maybe he's a name to watch. Maybe. And, and Johnny Wilson, obviously, I mean, you draft anybody who's six seven who isn't an offensive tackle. Very, very exciting and interesting. But that guy is as raw as it possibly gets. Either way, it's a good name to round out our Steelers 2024 NFL Draft Big Board.